Good evening, folks. This is Colonel Retired Chris White in central Pennsylvania, nearly midnight on Friday, October 11th, 2024. And I find myself quite puzzled and bemused at this hour as an effort to find this news in mainstream legacy media has simply been impossible. What am I talking about? Well, if Twitter can be trusted and a number of content creators on TikTok and Twitter have been posting stories that the case before the appellate court in New York regarding the ludicrous conviction of Donald Trump for non-existent crime has been overturned by the appellate court. And in fact, the closing arguments of the attorneys for Letitia James and the prosecutor's office were practically begging, begging the appellate court not to sanction them for what is certainly misconduct and arguably criminal conduct in the malicious prosecution of Donald Trump, clearly election interference. There was absolutely nothing wrong with what the attorneys did. My adversary said that she's relying on the Ernst & Young case. I read to you what you said. That's exactly what you did. One more point and I'll sit down. Keep relying on Greenberg. This is what the Greenberg court said, Greenberg too. Initially, we note that defendants may not raise issues on appeal that were not preserved on the record for our review. So even if they're right about what this court said and they're not right, it wouldn't matter anyway because lawyers have to preserve issues for all courts that may consider it. They have to look at things not temporarily at the time, but what could happen afterward. And given that, and I'm not, this isn't Brian Isaac or it's not Michael Ross, I'm reading to you from the court. They did what they were supposed to do. They did what they had to do. To sanction them is just wrong. Now, why is this not on any news site? And a decision was reached today, but I cannot find it on a single news site. And you look here as we go through some of these sites like the New York Times, the Washington Post, the list goes on and on. Even reliably conservative sites like the Washington Times have no mention of this landmark decision. I mean, this is shocking. But before I tell you the outcome of this, according to people on social media, while we wait for the news to actually report the news, let's take a look at what was said in this appellate court. And this is shocking as one of the justices basically rebukes these idiots defending the criminals in New York State. May it please the court, Judith she Bale starts from talking, the New York gets Attorney interrupted. General's office. All of the defendants repeatedly violated- Ms. Bale, can you identify any previous case in which the Attorney General sued under Executive Law 6312 to upset a private business transaction that was between equally sophisticated partners where the supposed victim had the ability and legal obligation to discover the allegedly misrepresented matters by conducting its own due diligence where the supposed wrongdoer advised the supposed victim through written disclaimers to conduct its own due diligence and to draw its own conclusions, where the alleged misrepresentation almost entirely concerned inherently subjective valuations of properties and businesses. Yes. And where, and where the victim never complained about any fraud in the transactional losses from it. Whoa, talk about a slam dunk, an absolute dunking by the defense team in this appellate case that Trump has brought to the court. This, as you recall, may be the $489 million that Donald Trump was forced to bond, which was an attempt to interfere with this election by forcing him to give up half a billion dollars of his personal wealth as a surety against him as a flight risk or whatever it is or, or compensation, whatever, whatever their judgment was. Remember that Bernie Madoff, who defrauded millions of people, including pensioners, driving people into abject poverty, causing suicides and bankrupting businesses and individuals all over the world, Bernie Madoff had a $10 million bond. Donald Trump had a $489 million bond in what is a non-existent crime, a non-existent crime. So tonight I can find nothing on this case in any of the media. So are these social media content creators mistaken, misleading us among them? First up, let's take a look at some of what the older millennial has to say about this case. So the Trump fraud case went before the appellate court this week. Indeed. And by the time it was over, the closing arguments of the Democrat lawyers was just them begging <laughs> to not get sanctioned. So yeah. look, many people aren't aware that the Trump fraud case went before the appeals court this week. And if you don't know how an appeals court works, there are five judges that sit in judgment for these cases. 
well, it's kind of the older millennial to explain this for his audience, but we don't need a lesson in how the appellate court works. What we do need, though, is to find out from the media if this actually happened. Now, he's not the only one. There's a few other social media content creators who've been following this case very closely while the media has neglected it. But remember that this case was reported breathlessly. Donald Trump showing up for his booking photograph, his fingerprinting, treated like a common criminal over trumped up bogus criminal case against him to get a fictitious 34 felony count conviction for non-existent crimes. This is abuse of the legal system at the highest level. Letitia James should be in prison. And she shouldn't be the only one. This judge should be removed from the bench and disbarred and probably, based on his conduct, face some criminal charges as well. This is unbelievable. And this was the entire effort before the assassination attempts to get rid of Trump. Everything has failed. And Donald Trump is surging in the polls and it's driving them nuts. Even Barack Obama now is coming out telling black men that they're not black men because they won't vote for women, that they're women-hating misogynists. That's a message that's not going over very well in the black community tonight. Is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. Yo, so I'm CJ Pearson, one of the young black men that President Obama yesterday tried to lecture into supporting Kamala Harris just because she, quote, looks like him. I'm trying to figure out one thing. Who do the fuck Obama pose to be? The fucking black messiah? Talking about his message to all the black men. Why we not vote for Miss Harris? Are you kidding me? Barack Obama. I didn't vote for you either time. I saw right through you back then. President Obama, with all due disrespect, man, go sit your duck ass down. Like we can't see what the fuck just happened in the last four years and then the four years before that. Like our pockets and our account don't read the fucking different numbers. Barack Obama and his Martha's Vineyard multi-million dollar mansions and his Netflix contracts and his grifting is running around telling black men that they're not real men because they're not voting for Kamala Harris. Wow, I guess you do what the plantation owner tells you to do, eh? Now, black men are telling him to piss off, as they should. And the mainstream media should be told to piss off for neglecting this story. How many of you actually knew that Donald Trump even had this case before the appellate court? Be honest, be honest. Did you know that this case was in front of the appellate court right now? Somebody raise your hand, anybody? Almost nobody knows because the media has neglected this story. The last story I can find reporting on this particular appellate court case in mainstream media was on September 26th, a full two weeks ago. Yet according to some content creators, the New York appellate court reached a decision today, the 11th of October, and nobody's reporting on it. This is the biggest news, yet no story above the fold on any of these bogus legacy media sites. Shame on them all. Or are we just being punked by social media content creators? Based on the closing arguments and what I saw, I don't think we're being punked. I think we're being misled and pushed towards a corrupt interference in our nation's choosing of its next president. Are you surprised? I'm not. Let's listen to another content creator, 1776. Some of y'all have been real quiet ever since Trump got his $450 Indeed. million dollars back. In case you haven't been following, the fraud case in New York went in front of the appellate court. Here on Bluetooth, we got to be careful of copyright claims for music. You can't play anything in the background. So uh, that was from TikTok. Uh, 1776 goes on to explain how he's getting his money back and won the case. And finally, the most recent one, this one published in the last three hours from another content creator. This one also posts on TikTok while mainstream media ignores this story. Let's hear what she has to say. Dang, y'all are real quiet today on the left, aren't you? Y'all must have seen what the appellate court did. We yep. all saw it, right? Not really. It's oh, not in the media. Right. They're not reporting it on the mainstream media. They're See, not. Donald Trump just got back $450 million that he spent on the million. appeals court. 34 counts. 34 counts is what corrupt politician Letitia James decided she was going to try to charge Trump with. And I knew he was going to win his money back. Well, to be fair, Roxanne, uh, many of us said so at the time. <laughs> said there's no basis here. Taking a state misdemeanor, which has expired the statute of limitations, bootstrapping it to a federal election law, which the, the court of New York has no legal jurisdiction over, bringing the two together to create a false 
concept of conspiracy and then denying the defense opportunities to defend itself. In addition, the crime that they claim was committed was only introduced in closing arguments, which didn't give the defense any opportunity to cross-examine witnesses or to refute evidence. The whole thing is a sham. So it's not a surprise, but I do appreciate Roxanne's reporting on this and her attention to this. Let's hear a little bit more about what Roxanne has to say before we wrap up our arguments in this section. The judge said there are no victims in this True. case. There is no evidence in this True. case. It was two smart business entities Correct. doing business together. The Deutsche bank, bank said, and Donald Trump. We don't have a problem. We were paid back. Trump said, we don't have a problem. We paid our loan back with interest. So what's the problem here? Correct. And the judge clearly said that it was a clear attack on a presidential candidate and can be misinterpreted for or interpreted as election interference. But there you go, folks. Just like the lies on the left about Donald Trump being a sex offender, which he's not, uh, a civil judgment against him for a law fabricated and created solely to prosecute Donald Trump on something that is already outside the statute of limitations that occurred over two decades prior for no witnesses, no forensic evidence, no police reports, no one ever told about this incident. And even the witnesses for the woman who made the claims actually said they have no recollection of ever mentioning this story. And that's a civil judgment, not a criminal judgment. But still they run around and say that he's a sexual offender. They also try to bring up the Billy Bush tape in which Donald Trump was making a graphic point about how desperate some women in Hollywood are to get fame and attention that you could grab them by the genitalia and they'd still come back for more, which is a true statement. And we've seen that with the Weinstein case. We've seen that with uh, what's going on now with all these other cases breaking out here. Unbelievable. Donald Trump, according to social media content creators, at this hour on the 11th of October, 2024, just before midnight, no mainstream media reporting this case. You've seen the top of the fold websites for multiple publications on here. Nothing. So are we being punked? If we're being punked, this is um, pretty bold and it will undermine the credibility of people like 1776 and Roxanne and the older millennial, none of whom I have reason to doubt. They've all been pretty straightforward and honest in the past, particularly the older millennial who's done some great commentary on social media. So that leads me to believe that this is once again interference in the events of 2024 because the media aren't reporting this. Why would you not report this is the biggest story out there? The biggest story and no one's talking about it. Hmm. And even if there hasn't been a judgment in favor of Donald Trump, if it had been against Donald Trump, guarantee it would have been on the front page of the New York Times, the Washington Post. All of these leftist publications would have had this on the, above the fold. Donald Trump lost his court case and he is a convicted felon and the sentencing will now come in December. That's what the story would have been. And even if he hasn't, even if the appellate court didn't reach a decision today, we should still have heard news stories about the progress of the appellate court, but we don't. Ask yourself why. Folks, an electoral landslide. Donald Trump wins this race, hands down. What say you? Cheers.